So today we're going to talk about how to navigate your issues on the iPad using uh, the 360 field application. I'm currently logged in as a subcontractor on this iPad that has issues assigned to them and we're going to walk through how to view these issues, use different filters, and ultimately complete them and sign off on them to completion. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to um, go into talking a little bit about the uh, different buttons that we have here. First I'm going to go into how you get into your issues within the app itself. Down here in the lower left hand corner I'm going to refer to these as the three bar dashboard and when you click on that you'll see these different items uh, to click in between within the app itself. As a subcontractor role you have issues, tasks, <laughs> library, models, and photos. Really what we're going to talk about in this video is just the issues uh, and then we'll maybe dive into a little bit more about the library as well. So I'm going to click on issues here and you'll notice that there are uh, quite a, a few different buttons at the top and I'm going to explain the first set of buttons up here which is by location all and then pins. There's really different two or th there's really two different ways to view your issues within field. You can view them by a current location by setting your location here for example, if you wanted to be in a room and know the different issues that were within the room, you could then select this and go into a different uh, list that uh, has the room uh, you're specifically wanting to look for the issues in. So for example, if I go down into RC4 here and I want to go down into level 1, I may want to look and you'll notice the number next to the uh, location itself. That indicates the number of issues within that room. So I'm going to go into bedroom uh, 2A here at the top. First, what you'll notice is your uh, location will change uh, to the the, um, the location that you're at or that you selected, and you'll notice that these are the different issues within the room itself. If you want to change locations, you can go ahead and click up at the top as well, go under change location, and then scroll through here to a different view. Let's go into the um, 104 bedroom right here. So that's one way to actually view your issues. Um, that happens to work really well if you want to um, see the amount of issues that you have in one specific location. Again, for example, um, the lowest level, which would be the room level, if you want to see what's in those, um, see the issues that's in those rooms specifically. So that's the by location. The next one I'm going to talk about is the all tab. The all tab here is really a long list of all of your uh, different issues that you have. So you'll notice I'm scrolling through uh, basically all the issues that I have on here. And this is good, it, it can be good if used uh, the right way with some different filters. And so here what I'm going to show you is uh, what this filter button has. When you click on the filter by, you'll actually notice I already have a filter on this, so I'll kind of explain that here too you'll notice that these, um, these are different things that you can filter by as your, um, within your issues here. So similar to the website component where you were filtering different things throughout your list, you can actually do the same thing on your iPad here as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clear all my issues here. And you'll notice when I select off of this, uh, the scroll pane over here actually will show a lot more issues that are um, that are assigned to your company. You'll notice that as well is that these are only issues that are assigned to your company here. You're not going to see anyone else's issues. Um, when you log in under your name and company, these are only assigned to you. Um, you'll also see on here, uh, since I have no filters on, that these are really both items that are open and work completed. So these are the work completed issues. If I scroll down maybe a little bit longer, we should see some open issues or some ones that are grayed out. Those are being closed. Um, so really, this list is really long here, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the filters just like we did on the website to shrink it down to really what we want to go see. And again, we're under the All tab because we really want to apply, we really want to apply filters to uh, all of these issues that we have out here. So let's say, for example, I want to know my current open QA, QC items. So I'm going to go to Filter By again here and I'm going to go down, up, or I'm sorry, up to the issue type. Now you'll notice that all of these different issue types are selected. If I want to deselect all of them, I'm going to go and hit the X here, and you'll notice that those will all change. 
So now what I want to do is scroll down to the specific item that I want to filter by. So I'm going to select Q at QC. I'm going to hit the back tab to filters because I actually uh, want to know what open QA QC items there are, but I need to change the uh, another filter for status. So I'm going to change the status. Again, all of those are selected. I'm going to deselect them with this X, and then I'm going to only select the open. So to uh, to then apply this filter, I'm just going to click over here to the left in an open area um, to have these filters then go through. I'm going to click over here, and you'll notice that it, the screen will change. These are again the um, the items that apply to those filters that you set. So similar to the website where we only had these three items that we saw as open QAQC items, those are the exact same uh, items on here as well. So similar to the website where you were able to click on an item and see the contents of it, we're going to do the same thing. So when you click on this, you'll notice a tray is opened of um, what is involved within this issue. So again, attachments, comments, what the issue type is, and then if you scroll down here, a little bit more information um, associated to the actual location as well. And so again, if you want to click on the attachments, you can then open that uh, attachment up by clicking on it. And this window will change here. Um, it looks like I'm having some issues with my uh, screenshot here. So let's see if I can close this and um, open it back up. All right, sorry about that. I'm having some Wi-Fi issues. So what we were saying is that uh, you can actually click on this um, picture attachment and it will open it up in a different viewer. And so you can actually pinch to zoom here and zoom in and, and kind of navigate around the picture to see what the contents are of that picture. Um, you can actually export it if you want to with this item up here in the top right. You can email, uh, open in a different program or uh, add an issue here as well. But we're going to go ahead and uh, hit close over here on the top left to take us back to the item itself. And so again, that's the attachments. If you go back uh, with that arrow, again, this is just showing the different um, the different items that are associated with that issue. So I'm gonna go and actually uh, click on the next issue below here and open this one up. Again, same thing, this one happens to have two attachments. This one has a drawing and it happens to have a picture as well. So I'm gonna hop into the drawing here and show you what that looks like. Now what this optimizing for zoom is, is the first time that you open a document, it'll actually go through this optimization to allow you to um, zoom in and zoom out uh, much more uh, quickly. And so once you do that once, it uh, doesn't need to do it again the next time. So here, this attachment is actually indicating where at uh, within this location as well. If I pinch out, um, you'll notice that it'll have this whole drawing associated with it but on the report that we printed uh, in the previous video that showed um, this issue, you'll see the blue box was really the only thing that was uh, printed uh, on that report. So uh, this is what the image, or I'm sorry, the plan that is attached to this issue looks like. So I'm, again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit close to go back to the, uh, the attachments itself. So that's really, um, these are, again, these are the three issues that happen to deal with the open QAQC. Now, if you want to, you can also go to, so say for example, uh, I wanna know just, I'm, I'm walking in a certain building, let's say uh, RC4, and I wanna know just the issues that are associated with that building. I can actually go to location here, and I can click on RC4, and it will actually show all the sublocations underneath uh, that overall location. So when I click off this here, it should really only show one item because that's the only item that happens to deal with RC4. Oh, I'm sorry, two items here. These two items should show, and this will go away. So I'm going to click off here over in this area, and you'll notice that those are the two only remaining. Now, say, for example, that I'm going up to the second floor of this building and want to know the issues that are only on the second floor. Again, I can go back up to the filter by. I'm going to go back down to location. And then I'm going to go underneath a subset of RC4 and to click on level 2. So what that's going to do is it's only going to show the issues on level 2. And again, for the open QAQC item. So um, since both of these are not on level 2, these will actually disappear and it will show no items on that level. So when I click off here, you'll notice that there are no open QAQC items on that floor. And again, if I wanted to go up 
another floor, you would do the same thing. Go back to filters, location, and then select level three. And obviously there won't be anything up on that uh, level as well. So that's kind of the use of filters. Uh, if you want to clear all of them at the same time, uh, this button up here will clear all of them. And then if I select off of it, it will show those again. So again, once you're on the all tab here, you really then can go and use the filters to kind of filter down to what you're looking for specifically. Again, it works really well for issue types, um, statuses of issues, since this is a whole list of uh, different statuses, um, by location, and also the sublocations underneath it as well. So that becomes really handy uh, when you want to kind of get a more broad view of what the issues are. And again, that was under the filter by. Um, you'll see which ones you have a filter for, and then by having that filter uh, follow through, you then just click off of the filter pane. So that's kind of the difference between the two by location, which again is setting your location to see the issues within a specific room or bedroom or hallway or bathroom. And then if you go to the all, uh, this is really the area where you're going to see all of them and then apply your filters uh, here as well. So that's the main difference between the two, and I hope that kind of uh, makes sense in how those two are different from each other. The next thing I want to talk about is down underneath here, which is a part of this barcode scanner. And so what we're planning on doing is having uh, sign-off sheets that will take you to a specific room. And so when you scan that barcode, you're actually going to be taken to that specific location and you'll be able to see the open items uh, that is assigned to your company within that room. And so, for example, I'm going to actually scan a barcode, and I'll show you here um, on the sheet. And it's going to take me to um, bedroom 106. And so this, this barcode on the sign-off sheet will be outside of this bedroom, which will then allow you to uh, see the open items within uh, that room. And so I'm going to go down here. The barcode is actually located under this hammer and wrench icon down here. So when I click on that, it's going to take me into that barcode scanner. And so when I do that, I'm going to show you what this sign-off sheet looks like um, that will be posted outside the room. So when I click on that, you'll actually see here, this is our sign-off sheet that we're going to be having. And then this is the barcode that you're going to be scanning. So just like that, it actually scanned the barcode and it changed that room to room 106. And so you'll see here, we actually have items on this checklist that need to be completed uh, for you to sign off on. And so it looks like there's two items that are assigned to this company in this room, one being already a closed item, and then one being an open item that uh, says electrical QC. And so to sign off and leave this room, this subcontractor would then need to verify that the electrical QC in this bedroom has been completed. And how that happens is they would complete the work, change the status from open to work completed, click on the item itself. You'll see here that there is a signature portion. So similar to actually signing off on the list on the door frame, that's a physical piece of paper, you're also gonna sign off on it electronically. And so when I click on signatures, you'll see this area for signing off on. And so I'm going to click the sign button, which is then gonna give me the opportunity to sign this. I'm gonna just use this person's initials. So it's gonna be RC, and then I'm gonna hit the done button. And then I can go ahead and click the back button. And then this item on the checklist has actually been completed, both signed off on on the room and signed off on on the program as well. And so that's really how we're going to handle uh, signing off on these uh, different checklists, both on the door frame itself, at the room, in the field, and also electronically as well. When you get back into a Wi-Fi connection, you're actually going to uh, sync that data up to um, our server down here in the lower right-hand corner. So you'll notice that there's a little uh, orange circle which means that you have information to upload back up into the server. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice that what it's doing is it's saying, hey, you've actually signed off on one issue in one area, and that's what I'm going to upload. And so when you do that, you're actually going to hit sync, and it's going to run through its different list of things to upload and download that information for you to send that information back up to the server. And so once that's done, there'll be a checklist, or I'm sorry, there'll be a check mark next to each um, 
part of the upload and download saying that that has been complete. And so that's really how you're going to sign off on uh, the rooms that we have these checklists for. And so um, again, if you want to, you can uh, scan that barcode here. I'll show you that again. Um, I'm actually going to change my location to show that it will go back to that room 106. So I'm going to go ahead and tap up here and change myself back to, let's say, this recent location of the game room. So I'm going to go down here and, again, scan this barcode, which is going to take me to that location. And so I'm going to click on that little anvil here. I'm going to click on the barcode scanner. And, again, you'll get a glimpse of what this sign-off sheet will look like. And here's the item that we were talking about being pertaining to is this electrical QC here. And so you're going to sign off on that sheet in the field, and you're also going to sign off on it on the iPad as well. So I'm going to go up here to the barcode and scan this. You'll hear a ding. And once that's been completed, you'll notice that it will change the location to that bedroom 106. And so again, we already did this, but we changed it from open to work completed. We tapped on the issue, we went into signatures, and that signature will be visible. Sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. If I go back in and click on it, it should show up. So that's a quick uh, video on how you actually are going to navigate these uh, issues on the iPad. Again, uh, what I just showed you with the barcodes and the sign-off sheets. And then also, if you want to view them at a higher level within the all location and then using the filters, uh, you can do that as well. I recommend to always look to see what filters you have, um, what you have selected. For example, let's go in here. If we actually had um, a certain issue selected here, say the um, say we had a different issue type selected. Uh, I'm just going to call it above ceiling coordination here and I go back to this by location, you'll notice that there's nothing in this room. And that's because those checklist items are actually called the room to completion list issue. And so when I click on that filter by and go back into the issue type here, the, uh, the completion lists are actually under this bedroom to completion list. Those are the types of issues. And so although you have a filter on that you maybe uh, were viewing in the all tab, when you go to that location, that filter still holds true. And so I really recommend making sure you look and seeing what uh, filters you have set up here um, before you go and scanning those sign off sheets. Because if you're, if you're looking at something different, um, that could be the case that you are not seeing something because your filters are on. So again, if you want to do that, just go ahead and hit clear all. And then you'll notice that when this updates or when you click off of it, those will then come back on. And those issue types are also within the issue itself. You'll see here, this is a uh, bedroom to completion list issue. I think this one, hap this one below here happens to be a QAQC issue. So that's a quick little demo on how to navigate your issues uh, on the iPad. Again, the issues on the dashboard is located at the top. And when you select that, you'll be given um, this different list of field buttons to uh, go and navigate these issues. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know.